So you want to make a movie, but you're thinking, there is no way I can make a film because you need money. You need to know the right people. You have to have connections. And besides, who has the time? Well, tonight's guest, and there are three of them, didn't start with a budget. They made their own connections with the right people, and they also made time to do what they wanted to do. These women are all do-it-yourself filmmakers. And basically what they have done is they made a movie pretty much by any means necessary. Well, tonight we're going to sit down with them. We're going to talk with three producers, Ingrid Veniger, Valerie Bahajiar, and Carl Aiken. I'm Tom Ernst, and this is Making Movies the Canadian Way. Fantastic. I've come into the living room and you guys are already seated. Already you helped yourself to a glass of water. This is yeah. fantastic. <laughs> we have a, a, a great uh, a panel here today. Great guests that have been doing some wonderful work in the independent uh, cinema field. First of all, to my left, we have Coral Aiken, uh, who uh, produced Big Muddy, one of my favorite uh, independent films from uh, last year. Was it two years ago? Two years, Two years ago. I still Canadian liked it last year. last year. I, I, yeah. Even last year I liked it. I saw it twice, so it counts. <laughs> uh, in, in the center is Valerie Bahajiar. We uh, might remember her from uh, back when she did uh, movies like Roadkill, uh, and then now she is a director and producer herself. Her movie, The Anniversary, was recently released, and she's working on a new one right now as we speak. I think that's almost ready for release. Uh, almost there, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. It's hard to be human. It's hard to be, be human. human. And then there's another one that we'll chat about as we get to it. Okay. And then finally, it, Ingrid Veninger. Ingrid has made uh, countless film, independent films, has, has won several awards, has done a lot, actually, I think, for women in filmmaking in the independent field. Uh, she, he Hates Pigeons is out now, uh, as well as uh, The Animal Project, you could think. Is that on Netflix or...? It's on iTunes and Vimeo Worldwide, iTunes in Canada. You gotta see this film. It's a, it's, it's a pretty interesting and actually kind of fun film. You know, uh, when we're talking about Canadian independent cinema, we're talking about something that's not necessarily uh, self-sufficient. It's not something that you could sort of base, base a career on. I mean, it's kind of remarkable that the three of you are still making independent films. Uh, uh, how do you do it? Where's the drive? Where's the passion to do this kind of thing, Coral? I just, I feel a responsibility to, to tell stories that aren't being told and I feel like that's just part of what drives me. I'm, it's such a collaborative field, you both know this, that I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to work with different voices and I mean that's what, that's what gets me reading scripts and that's what gets me excited to go out and fundraise and all the hard things. Um, so for me it comes back to story and to storytelling always. Now, it's interesting. You're in a position where a lot of the stories that come to you come from other writers. Mm -hmm. uh, Valerie and Ingrid, your, your work is your own. I mean, uh, so it's your vision. Mm -hmm. When we talk about a collaborative effort here, mm -hmm. um, how far does that collaboration go when it's your vision, it's your story? I cast a team as well as my actors, right? So it's my DOP producer and that whole crew is, uh, it, we collaborate. So sure, I put down the script and then I have my people and I send it out to them and then they give me their feedback and I change and change and change and change. That's what we're doing right now. Uh, uh, and that's the collaboration. And then you go, that's, that's the first part of the, the first, there are three films that are usually made in when you make a film, right? There's the one that's on the page, there's the one in production, and then there's one in post-production, right? So and then you get on set and the collaboration changes all over again, right? It's like the locations and, and the camera crew, and it's like, wow, this looks good, and the actors come in and they try something different, and the, so we all, it all evolves from there, and then you go into the post-production house and with the editor, and a new story unfolds. So it's uh, quite often it'd be a different story maybe than the one that you started off with. I mean, central story's there, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, the crux of it is, is there, but so much unfolds, and it, that is why I do it. Really, to just sort of watch this thing 
it's like, is it like raising a child? And so I can hang out with you. Tom. Well, I know that much. I know hanging out with <laughs> me is a big bonus for that. At film answer. festivals <laughs> and you know, glass see-through tables. But uh, yeah, no, that that is why I do it. I just love the collaboration. Like the the worst part is sitting in my house writing. It's just like. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, because you're alone all the time, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. You're alone, you're alone, alone, and then, and then uh, you go out. You there. get to share. This is, this is your experience. A, lo a lot of your films, especially your earlier films, uh, involve your family. Uh, yeah. a, a starring in, and, and sometimes, uh, like, uh, 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 I'm a good person, I'm a bad person. Yeah. Do I have that in the right order? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, I'm a good person, I'm a bad person. It, it, the, it's a very thin line between who the characters are as characters and who you are as Ingrid and your daughter who appears in the film. Yeah, I really like blurring the lines in that sort of hybrid direct cinema, partly fiction, part, partly documentary way. Also, doing that kind of hybrid enables me to go out and do my feature films with a crew of maybe two to five people. I have, I've had less crew on all my five <laughs> features combined than are in this room right now. I'm happy now, I feel alive. I feel alive. I was at a film festival, I was at Berlin actually, and there were filmmakers from Finland, and they were talking about how it was really difficult to foster an independent micro budget cinema because crews would not work on projects below a certain wage, and it was impossible to sort of galvanize people around independent film. Whereas I find in Canada, in our community, we have amazing crews that are willing, but also the post, like you mentioned, the post. Post houses like Deluxe, you know, has stepped up to do mixing and color grading and all these things that enable us to be competitive on a world stage with having our films look and sound fantastic mm -hmm. comes from how you capture stuff in production, but also how you finish it. Mm -hmm. So there's such a strong community in that comes around enabling us making our films for micro budgets. Is, is, that, is that just because they're good people uh, or uh, is there a responsibility? In, in sort of the community to, to help uh, independent cinema, to help uh, upcoming Canadian filmmakers? I think there is, a, especially right now in, in Toronto, there's a community of people and there's the big giant films that are here and then there's the like teeny tiny things that are here and we're all working our way up and we're all bringing each other up. It's, you know, I think that is a responsibility for me as a producer, I think about that a lot, you know, like who's ready to take the next step and how can I help assist that, you know? It's not just about like who's the best team for this movie, but who's ready to take on a new challenge. And I think, I think that's part of why someone will come and work on a smaller thing, you know? But do you see the next step as bigger scale, bigger budget, stronger, I don't, faster? I don't, I mean that in terms of like, is the set decorator really itching to be a production designer and they ready to, move up with me on this or that. And I mean, I think, I think that's part of how we're all growing together. And because we have such a huge diversity of budget scale, you know, I think that's something that's very special. And I think that's why we're seeing a new, like really a new wave of, of Toronto movies right now. And mm -hmm. I am from Winnipeg, so I shouldn't, you know, really identify with Toronto this much, but I really, really see mm -hmm. that we're doing something very special here right now. It, it does seem to that way. I mean, when we look at a lot of the films that came out this year, there's even an aspect, I think, of independent film that feels like a bit of a throwback. If, if you look at, at The Sleeping Giant, I thought that was a real throwback to films like uh, going, going Down the Road, it, mm -hmm. and Road and Who's Seen the Wind. I mean, are, are we starting to recognize that we don't have to play the same game that other filmmakers are playing in other countries, that we can actually find our own voice, and our, of course our voice is, is, is wider now, it isn't just um, you know, Canadians per se. Uh, we could take a Canadian film and go to uh, Korea and it'd be a Canadian film. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, are we seeing a little bit of uh, more confidence then in our storytelling? I think so, I think so. And also it's, it's you know what really helped, well it helped me, is Indiegogo, for instance. Mm. I, I got to the point where it's like, I'm not gonna wait for telefilm any longer. I'm just gonna go make this film. So I sat at my kitchen table and I wrote it very quickly and uh, got, made $15,000 Indiegogo and made the feature. On 15,000? Yeah, 
And then everything else is deferred payment. You know, we mm -hmm. have to put, and nothing's just fifteen thousand. But that's how I made my feature first feature film, and that allowed me to make it the way I wanted to make it. And that is the sort of film, the going down the road type of film, it is, right? And I think that's what's happening is that people are realizing that they don't have to wait for telefilm anymore. Uh, sorry, telefilm. Well, <laughs> but I mean, you know, like, and, but and, I mean, and telefilm's doing a lot for micro budget, and there 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 mm -hmm. is a lot of films that they're supporting. But I think what to your point about Indiegogo, it helps build an audience yeah. because you have people investing, whether it be a dollar or fifty or a thousand, in wanting to see the result of this film. So the more people that you sort of can get in on the ground floor, the more warriors you have when you really need it mm -hmm. in the sort of marketing and distribution stage. So that's what I found really great about Indiegogo. And then on top of that is I'm finding that, oh my god, there's an audience for this film. You know, people want to see this film that's set in my house with eight actors doing amazing performances, you know. You know, they don't care if they're, well, my audience doesn't care if there's a car chase and whatnot. Right. But doesn't that Indiegogo and, and the other crowdfunding, doesn't that dry up eventually? Don't yeah. they go, oh, oh, here's another email from Valerie. She's going to ask me for more money. <laughs> I think that's true. I think that's very true. And I honestly, I don't do crowdfunding anymore, but I do try and engage, like you're saying, with people on the web. Like I'm, so there's a great program called IPF through um, a fund, and uh, they require that you put a pitch online for to create a web series, mm -hmm. and then they track your views for a month. So I'm, I'm have pitched something to this, mm -hmm. and we really tried to reach out to our particular audience for this it's about this musician who's like a silly hamilton guy named b.a johnston who has great very you know very excited fan base and um you know we had we have five thousand views it's been up for like a week wow and it's so exciting for me as a producer to not be like i'll spend three years on the script and then i'll go into production then i'm going to work on this and you know, five years later you have the movie, you're like, so who wants to see it, anyone? And to be directly in touch with your audience, that's what those things like Indiegogo and, and Vimeo and Kickstarter are giving yeah. us. They're giving us a sense of like, we're making something for someone. That shouldn't be revolutionary, but it is. Right. Yeah, but yeah and I, just, I was just gonna say like, in terms of it drying up, I don't, hopefully it will never dry up because it's not about the ask, it's, all, it's about what you're giving, what you're offering, and it's about the dialogue and the exchange. So it's not charity. It's not let me just make my film. It's I'm actually gonna try and generate something that's interesting to you and let's have a dialogue about how it can be even more interesting to you and what you get out of it. It's about what you get out of it, what you get out of it. You know, a lot of those people that did give for the Indiegogo for the first feature, uh, when they saw the film and they saw their names up in the credits, they, yeah. were like, they were like, wow, you actually put my name up there. And they felt good, it felt good. But and if you're getting to the point, Ingrid, where, where people who donated 10 bucks are starting saying, Ingrid, you know what I really like? I think this movie needs an elephant. You know, right. I, I, I mean, you, it's getting a bit nerve wracking, though, is it not? I mean, I, I, I'd be like, do you have an elephant? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd love to put an I elephant. I'd love to put an yeah. elephant. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I think, look, I'm on my sixth feature film, and I don't feature, and I don't think I'm going to have any more money than I had on my second. So. Again, it's not necessarily for me, you get, you know, it gets easier, nor do you get more money with every one, but we do this kind of coming back to your first question, for all kinds of reasons, there's a big why, you know, I sort of want to walk the talk with my kids mm -hmm. and, and sort of um, be an example of doing something that I really love and care about, but also each film has its own very particular why, you know, and you sort of alluded to working with my children, you know, at a very specific time in their lives where I wanted to capture that in between being a child and being a teenager time or whatever, whatever the why is of each particular film. There's all kinds of things that, that drive us and it is just a continuum. Like it doesn't get easier and we don't necessarily get more money and we have to find other ways to make money to do what we love, but we do it because we have to. We do it because otherwise we just feel like we're gonna shrivel up and die. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. That's yeah, basically like if you're thinking about doing it and you have any other skills, like go do that. Probably. Right. It's but really hard. <laughs> but it is a <laughs> Yeah, it's true, I, honestly, but it is a wonderful I, I do it because I need to do it as well. Yeah, I you have to do you. it. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't do it for the glamour that is perceived there in the is business. No glamour. It's the most glamorous thing. 
This Probably is so glamorous. I can't believe yeah. I, they, they, they put makeup on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they put saying, it on me too, but yeah. that's a regular <laughs> thing. <laughs> I do that myself. Yeah. Um, no, and for, the, and the, for the people that you meet, and I was going to say a big incentive for me is going to film festivals and traveling, yeah. which we definitely get a little more out of as directors. We tend to sometimes get our flights covered or accommodation or a pass, but mm -hmm. as a producer, you get none of that. So on the film festivals, know, yeah, I get a sense of community though because I've been doing a lot of these like international producing programs, which is just so for like like-minded nerds like myself, and we're like, like what, what Excel spreadsheet do you use and yeah. stuff? So yeah, I went to Berlin and I did something called Transatlantic Partners, which is incredible about European and Canadian and American producers and what can we learn from each other. And I mean, just to share those things with like-minded like people and then to see people watching your film, like, there's nothing better than that. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. And yeah, you, you have this community that's worldwide. I, there are, uh, when I was at San Jose, I have like about six friends and we're constantly emailing each other, emailing each other's rough cuts and mm. stuff. And we're talking like Australia, England, wherever, all over the place. And so it's a beautiful thing. And also on top of that, you learn so much from learn doing a film uh, that you can't wait to practice what you learned. Unfortunately, it's such an expensive medium and it takes quite a bit of time before you get to practice what you learn. Right. But that's what I, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta, I'm not gonna make that mistake again. I'm gonna make it better and then I make another mistake. And anyways, it's just, there's so many reasons why uh, I make films. I think that's, <laughs> can I just sorry, respond to that? Sorry, I know, no, no, but I think that's a really, really good point because there, we're sort of in a time where I was looking at what producers are looking for and what distributors and world sales agents are looking for, and everyone's looking for emerging, new, discovery. But I think there's something so important to what you just said about the continuum of learning and applying and learning and applying, and that we both have to sort of, yes, encourage and foster the emerging, but also help keep the people that are doing it continuously yeah. going. You know, I think it's the middle group that is, like, in, like everywhere, the funding for the $2 million to $5 million film is really tricky, and also the sort of livelihood for that middle group of filmmakers where you can, uh, you can make your first feature because you're new and hot, you can maybe get your second, but then to go third, fourth, fifth, until you're a master, being in the middle is really, really tricky. Can I ask a question? Mm. Am I allowed to do that? You're allowed to ask a question. Um, I feel me? like it's a very, <laughs> yeah, oh. uh, I'm like, bye Tom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like it's a very, very relevant issue to women in film, that middle thing you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because also, maybe you go have a baby in that time, and yeah. then where do you go? Like, that where was do those question, voices actually, go? I was gonna ask uh, I'm like, Tom, ask that question. <laughs> 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 you both have kids, like, I'm, I'm really, hel how, help? How do we do it? Well, he's got a job. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> child labor is okay. <laughs> but that, that is a really, really good point. I, um, I, I'm allowed to say this now, but I, I just recently sat on the Canada Council jury, and we realized that for film, uh, media arts, and there was a realization there that uh, there weren't any women who applied for uh, established. Emerging or mid-career, yes, but once they got to established, they didn't, and we were just very confused as to why. And then it's like, well, we do, have children and then it's it's just it's difficult but the councils the arts councils are a lot more um, accessible mm -hmm. so it is a very curious question like what happens how do we do it we just but who do, decides to establish it do you I mean uh, they d they do I mean you could but uh, it's a uh, how many years you've been making it's projects like over 10 years, years and a certain something. amount of work yeah right. yeah they actually wouldn't for me when I apply for Canada Council, they called me up and said, no, Valerie, you're no longer mid-career, you are established. And I was just like, <laughs> because, oops, uh, because uh, <laughs> I knew it was going to come out, I knew it. Sorry. I knew, because I didn't want to have to compete against <laughs> certain filmmakers that mm -hmm. also apply, who have sure. made many, many more films sure. than I have. But anyways, that's what happened. Now, how do you do it when you have a child? And, you know, I'm a single mom, and... Uh, it's, it, I wake up very early and I go to bed very late. So it's a lot of work. I mean, I was just going to talk about uh, <laughs> the sacrifices. <laughs> Please wake up. Uh, um, the sacrifices you have to make to keep in this business. I mean, uh, maybe, 
it's not necessarily so, but perhaps maybe one might consider not having a family to, as a sacrifice. Uh, 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 time with your family could be a sacrifice. I mean, what kind of sacrifices are involved? We eat less. No. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, yeah, I, I, well, I think we can have it all, but just not necessarily all the time. So in my teens, I was acting. I put some money away. In my 20s, I had my family. Those 10 years were devoted to my family. My 30s, I started to get back into it, doing short films and slowly writing and directing. I didn't direct my first feature film until I was 42. Now, if I didn't have children, that might have been in my late 20s, early 30s. So yeah, that's 10 years. And I think it kind of takes 10 years to get your foothold in whatever it is, be, th be it producing or writing and directing, um, and building your network, it's, it's sort of a 10-year commitment. And if you're going to take 10 years out, you kind of are starting from scratch because things are changing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, all three of you uh, have been on camera. Uh, 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 you've been in a few shorts, am I correct? I had a whole dance career, Tom. Uh, uh, you yeah. have it now, okay. Oh, you don't follow <laughs> Winnipeg Modern Dance? Yeah, you it's had really a dance career, yeah. You. Okay. I, d I do not follow <laughs> Winnipeg Dance, although Everyone I Everyone here is here from my dance career. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. it. Actually, we were hoping Can that you'd do, do a, a few bit of things yeah. for us now. No, guys, I've retired. Actually, oh, um, forget it. No way. I've been trying to talk Ingrid into doing a musical, so we could. Okay, Ingrid, uh, yeah, I'll choreograph right it for you. I would. I'm I would. Down, Tom. <laughs> Seriously. You have been uh, uh, in front of the camera uh, as an actor. If anybody remembers the uh, 1980s horror film *The Gate*, which I watched again yesterday. <laughs> Why would you watch that again <laughs> yesterday? That's I so am. Wild. I am. Well, the Gate is a fun the movie. The Gate. It's, it is. It uh, is uh, and Tibor, the director of that film, has gone on to do a great spider movie recently. You should Stephen really check Dorf, out. Stephen Dorff, you know, took off. And uh, oh, well, so many. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly Rowland. So Rowan. The Gate. It's on YouTube. You can find it. Uh, and then, and then I mentioned to your early acting career. Is it? You know, did you decide just to not perform anymore? That that you decided. Well, you're in your own films quite frequently, but. The directing uh, and, be, and doing these independents rather than working for someone else and their story. No, I'm still acting. Next week I start rehearsal for a play at Can Stage. Yeah. So I, and you know, I did a short film just recently. So I'm still doing, uh, you know, uh, my acting career is what pays the bills, sort of. But uh, yeah. I, I think it's so great as filmmakers like to stick, if we can keep our foot in that because it's yeah. so similar to writing. Don't you find that? It acting helps. empowers it totally your directing me, and yeah. writing. Yeah, yeah and, and working with actors and uh, it all, it, I love it. I love doing it all and I will always do it all. Yeah, I mean, it just seem, <laughs> seems like a whole scope that I couldn't, I couldn't let any of those things out. If I, you yeah. you're produce, you direct, you act, I mean, they all seem like fun. I know they're hard, but they all seem like fun. Yeah. We we're talking about performers. Um, a, a big Money had uh, uh, James LaGrosse in it. And, yes. uh, and, and of course you go, oh my God, that's James LaGrosse. You don't always expect to see a Hollywood star mm -hmm. um, in, in uh, a Canadian production. Um, is that becoming more of the norm? I think we're asked to do that. And I think it's a sort of idea of, um, you know, how to reach an audience that's really broad. You know, how are we gonna have a notable person in the movie? Like my film that's um, gonna be uh, I'll have some news about a festival it's going to be playing at soon. It um, has Pamela Anderson in it. And I think the thing that we can do as independent filmmakers is provide opportunities that maybe someone like Pamela is not getting and give her a role that's like really interesting. That's not just something, you know, like we gave her a bit of a chance to recontextualize herself in our film, uh, which is called The People Garden, um, yeah. directed by Nadia Litz who you know, and uh, I think it's like I was saying about crew members moving up, how do you give somebody an opportunity? How do you, how do you make it a win-win thing, like Ingrid was saying about people giving money online, you know? Like what what would that person get out of it? Like James, James is very, he's in the film as well, because we have a relationship with him now. Um, people want to be in really good scripts. They do, and it's a myth that you're gonna get some person and it's gonna blow up you know, your, your movie, but it does happen. Mm. But uh, it, it's interesting, I mean, you, you do know what it sounds like when you said, uh, we're giving Pamela Anderson an opportunity. You know, people are going, oh, I'm well. I'm a producer, I say ridiculous things all day long. That's <laughs> my whole job. <laughs> <laughs> when you do have that, James the Gross is, is fantastic and make money, uh, money, and if you haven't had a chance to see this film, 
great film, a great suspense film. Actually, it's, a, it's kind of a throwback to these, uh, I, I would say, well, not so much a throwback, but it's a, it's a great thriller that we used to see, like Red Rock uh, um, City, whatever that was called, Red yeah. Rock something. <laughs> um, anyway, um, but you also had great Canadian stars in there. Like, and mm -hmm. I, Stephen McCaddy is, is mm -hmm. a great Amazing. Canadian actor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we have an opportunity out there for a star system? Or, or, or do we even need one? Telefilm wants us to have one in the the sort of point system that we mm -hmm. have. I don't know what I would don't you think say. So, are there stars in Sleeping Giant? I mean, are there stars in Quebec cinema that would be recognized in the states? Like, no, you know. I think that there's all kinds of ways to make films, um, and the auteur cinema of Quebec and of Europe often doesn't have stars. They're just really, really solid scripts with in, in executed superbly and they're masterful films and we have we have amazing crafts people and I think that the star casting a star is a bit more of an industry commercial approach to it but there's all all kinds of ways and um, when you look at Canada's top 10 films that screen at the light box there's an example of everything across the board mm. but uh, it, it, there's also because our stories are getting better known uh, because we've had some ambassadors uh, I mean, you might, you might say they're too big to be ambassadors anymore, but people like Cronenberg and Adam Goyen and, and uh, Tipa Mehta and all, some of those other filmmakers uh, and a lot of the Quebecois filmmakers uh, that uh, Canada, Canadian films are kind of like the hot thing now. It's like when um, uh, actors want to do that independent films to prove that they're serious, to prove that they could do something else. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, it, are, are, do we have a good reputation outside of our, uh, our own borders? I think, I think so. When you go to film festivals, that's where you hear it, right? And, and uh, we're celebrated quite a bit, you know. Um, I want to go back to about the actory thing, the actory and yeah, star the system actory and thing stuff, I, because yeah. it's like, I, um, I, I would love to just cast Canadians. And, you know, mo all my films I cast through, because I'm in theater, I cast through theater. Um, and uh, I like working with theater actors, just, that's just my thing. Uh, because they like to, they roll in the dirt and that sort of thing. But, and I think our country has extraordinary actors, like incredible actors. But every time I see a show, I'm like blown away by an actor, Canadian actor. Um, do we need stars? I don't know about that question. I don't know how to answer that question. But what bothers me as an actor is like having to go and audition over and over again, or going to an audition for some TV show and seeing some wonderful actor that I've seen do incredible work go for one line. That is what sucks with the Canadian industry. We only go sideways, is that we let our actors go sideways instead of celebrating them. Uh, you know, but isn't that what a star system would do then? That give that opportunity Perhaps. to Perhaps. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. It's, it's like, you know, let's call in Ingrid Veninger to do this role. Let's call in, so uh, instead of seeing her in the waiting room, auditioning for that one line. There's I mean, the things that, like, Sorry. star systems in terms of, you know, it, stars, stars systems require a big population and heavy marketing dollars. A hype machine. Hype generate stars. It's not rocket science. You throw money at something. I mean, I have a story with Clark Johnson. Clark Johnson was a nurse fighter boy, which was at mm -hmm. TIFF, and people were coming in and out of the Intercontinent, Intercontinental Hotel, and he was going in and out, and he was dapper with his hat on and everything. And no one was stopping to say, hey, what? And he was on The Wire and this and that, star of our film. And uh, people were coming out that I didn't recognize, and the, f the fan hounds were sort of circling them and getting their autographs. So he went back into the hotel lobby. I went back into the scrum. I said, oh my God, is that Clark Johnson? Is he on the wire? They were all like, oh my God, cars stop, people stop, people on the sidewalk. They didn't know who it was. <laughs> He's coming out now. He's coming out now. Oh, can I borrow your festival? Look, oh my God, Clark Johnson. It took <laughs> no more than three minutes to create a total frenzy so that when he came out of the hotel the last time, People were attacking him, taking pictures with him, getting their books signed by him or whatever. And then he was sort of trapped. He had nowhere to go because people generally leave the hotel and get into a limo. He had to kind of turn around and go back to the lobby. But <laughs> it, took, it took nothing. And if we just put a little bit of imagination into, you know, and money into marketing and distribution, we could create a kind of frenzy pretty easily. It's just we don't really put money there. It's mm -hmm. not our... 
It's not our way. Our way is kind of to let the work speak for itself and not to brag or boast or kind of, you know, um, hype too hard. So it's just our way. It's part of our culture. So it's time to stop being so Canadian about our films. But I think I there's a beauty in that too. There is a there's beauty a beauty in, in just too. sitting back. Yeah, but I'm talking more about like uh, forcing actors to to audition over and over again, not really celebrating their work properly. An, an example is Jackie Burroughs. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't know the if late you, Jackie Burroughs. The late Jackie Burroughs. I was on the subway with Jackie Burroughs going to a TV Ontario voice audition many years ago. <laughs> and uh, she had just won a gem, no, Genie for uh, Winter's Tan. Yes. And she was cleaning houses. And, and then she got, and she didn't get that voice gig. I got the voice gig. And then I saw her again, and then she got road to Avonlea, Avonlea. Mm -hmm. and then was able to buy a house in uh, Have Mexico. someone else clean it. And have someone else clean it in Mexico. And that is what I can't stand witnessing. Well, the, the, it is a case of, of just uh, almost like not appreciating uh, yeah. what we create and, 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 and getting it out there. Now, we do have great distribution companies in, in Canada. We have Mongrel, who does international films as well. Mm -hmm. We have films we love. I mean... Uh, uh, there's got to be sort of some something put aside, something that sort of embraces your work. And I mean, that, well, it's Sleeping Giant. Is that? Uh, does anybody know how that's doing internationally yet? Financially, no. Internationally, just had a big release in France, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a better chance than going outside uh, uh, Canada for a success of your film? I mean, Patricia did with Mermaids in Cannes. I mean, you get or Xavier Dolan in Cannes yeah. with I Killed My Mother. I mean you get that sort of validation outside and that can you know really benefit you inside of Canada but that's that's all over the world too sometimes you know you get validation by the states if you're in Madrid and then you come back to Madrid and suddenly you're yeah. celebrated it's it's, it's all true. over that the place you get over. you get yeah. validated by the big kahuna mm -hmm. and then you're valued more where you come from mm -hmm. hmm. Uh, we, we, talk, we bounced around the idea of festivals and, and how important they are, and certainly you, uh, I think I've met all three of you at a festival oh. at one time or another. Well, you were stalking me? Yes, I was, yeah. And I'm her bodyguard, so yeah. I'm Yeah, like, that's what we met, yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you're and over you were that. The, and you were <laughs> we the were memo driver in that case. <laughs> uh, it just all came together. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, how important <laughs> are these uh, uh, festivals? Uh, festival, thank you. I said videos. I, I have no idea so why. So important. I mean, I completely agree with what you're saying. Like, we, I had a short film that was in the Cannes student uh, selection. Oh. And it was just completely a road to being financed and that's big muddy so we had a short film and from that validation from can obviously that's a huge stamp of approval and that gave that that young filmmaker his his feature you know a lot of these a lot of films start as short films a lot of feature films began uh, i mean you also were involved in, in a great film that just lo loved uh the, the weatherman and the shadow boxer it's yeah, a great movie. Uh, and now I, ra I ran it by Randall Okita? Yes, yeah. He's making a feature now. I don't know if it's that. Yeah, no, he's doing something totally different. Um, I was the line producer of that, which is, you know, back to the day job thing. That's what I do. I do a lot of the logistics jobs, like production managing and line producing. Mm -hmm. um, but Randall is a very, very, very talented filmmaker. He's mm -hmm. a very special filmmaker. So can I ask, like, a film like that, didn't it win the award at TIFF? Didn't it won... Or honorable mention or something. Yeah, it, it did. It won. It won. Short. So yeah. now, yeah. how do we see? Was it at NFB? Did it work with the it's NFB? On the, it's NFB. Yeah, I know it's just been released online through the NFB. Great. So I mean, he had a great partner with the NFB, and they um, they basically produced the film um, with him. So yeah, having that having that film do so well, and he even was just honored with a retrospective. Uh, of his, his work at uh, Real Asian Film Festival, which is, you know, mm -hmm. is a great film festival here. And you can't discount the local film festivals and the Canadian film festivals. They are very crucial to keeping our cinema alive. Mm -hmm. I think they do, they do yeah. great work. I is, mean is there a difference between a, a festival film and, and a film once it gets released on, into the market? I mean, that, can a film work so well at a film festival and then just not work so well outside of it? Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's like there's different. Oh, you guys are really hating <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm, I'm traumatizing you, aren't I? Yeah, you are. <laughs> um, no, well, there's, there's different angles on yeah. that, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you can, 
you know, you can launch a film out of TIFF and really use all of, because it's a lot of free press during the festival too. Okay. So if you manage to get really good press, um, there's a lot of people that hear about the film at the festival, but then are waiting for the release, and they're just waiting to see, are people talking about it? What's the buzz? Am I hearing about it through word of mouth? Am I reading a review? And then when it gets released, you're getting all those people that maybe weren't able to pay the $26, and now are paying the $12 or $15. And so every little bit of promotion and every little bit of you know, getting the film exhibited and put before an audience really, really helps. And to mm -hmm. your point, I think that the, the problem used to be, okay, so the film plays at a festival, we hear about it, maybe it gets released, maybe it doesn't, so we sort of halfway hear about it, and then what? You want to see a Canadian film, how do you get to see it? Yeah. More and more now we do have the online, whether we do direct sales off of our websites or whether we join with iTunes or, or Vimeo VOD, there's so many options, like all five of my films are going on Fandor, you know, across North America, starting in April, one will be released every month. So people, audiences, not only in Canada, but worldwide, can get to see Canadian films online, which is fairly a new thing for yeah. us as independent filmmakers. Yeah. And there's nobody better than you at taking what the anything you have from a festival and like making it into momentum. Like you are the master yeah. at that. That's what your master class should be up. Thank yeah. you. Ingrid is amazing at that. <laughs> no, we're you we're know very what lucky to have her here. Honestly, <laughs> though, she is amazing at that. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I think the thing is that I had to get over it feeling like I was um, just hyping my work. And I had to get around the idea of it being a celebration and something I was accountable for and responsible to for my cast and my crew and everyone that contributed. So the more people that see the film, the more people that see their work, the, the healthier the whole thing becomes. So we have to get over the, oh, I'm too shy to talk about yeah. the release. We have yeah, yeah. to do it. It's part of the push, job. Push, push. Even if you yeah. have a distributor, even if you have a great distrib distribution partner, like I've had for my films, I feel like there's still so much that we have to do, um, you have you to know, do on it. our you own. You really do. Even I'm with, if, I'm with Mongrel, the best which job. is yeah. uh, the yes. anniversary is with Mongrel. And, um, you know, I had to do the theatrical release on my own. And that's, you know, as much as I could. And I, my budget was done. I had nothing more. So it was all freebies. And you, Tom, you who did, helped me. <laughs> you oh, yeah, did the oh the you did, yeah, sort yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gave me a list of emails. And so I started stalking people and got some reviews. And, and you know, it's the best I could do with with five bucks, right? But that, yeah. thank you, Sorry thank you. Five, five you bucks, I, I don't remember getting the five <laughs> bucks, but anyway. <laughs> but um, they've no, and you have to have a tough skin, right? Yeah, and a tough skin, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. not everyone's. But, um, so yes, uh, you, ha you are responsible to get it out there. And I felt exactly the same. It's like, I have great actors in my film. Yeah. People need to see them. But isn't it also part, part that the job is the, the great actors to go out there and speak for the film? I mean. Directors are, yeah, let's face it, people yeah. love meeting the directors and that's one thing that the festival allows you to do. Uh, it's actually one of the things that being an independent filmmaker allows you to do is, is connect to your audience. But quite often people love to s hear from the person they've seen on yeah. the screen. So what, what responsibilities do your performers have? I mean for the Animal Project, which was an actor co-op, all my actors were union actors. It, went on, it was an ensemble of eight actors with Aaron Poole and Joey Klein and Jonathan Susan, Serena Palmer and Hannah Cheeseman and Jessica Greco and my son Jacob and Emmanuel um, Kabongo. And they, I talked to them at the very beginning. I said, all right, well, if you're going to be a part of this project, you're going to be part of not only being in front of the camera, but a part of the marketing and distribution of the film. So they're on the streets in the animal suits when we're releasing the film. They're handing out postcards. They're on social media. We're having powwows at my house. We are strategizing together because it benefits them and mm -hmm. it benefits everybody if the film gets out there. So they were a huge part of the marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, and the, that's kind of, you have some uh, great, like all of those were great Canadian actors, Aaron Poole, and, and, and certainly in your film, and, uh, uh, and Big Muddy, and you've made more films with Big Muddy. This is the one that always sticks in my head. Uh, I love that you love it. I did, lo I, I love, love that, that film, it. and it was, uh, uh, it was, I think it was one of the first uh, that I got to review from uh, the festival at that year, and then followed it to uh, Sudbury. And a lot of people don't know that uh, uh, Canadians actually do, in a in a lot of the small communities, Sudbury, Kingston, 
really, uh, there's a real audience there and there's a real support for these things because uh, if you go to the Kingston Canadian Film Festival, every screening's packed. Uh, if you go to the Sudbury Film Festival, every screening's packed. I mean, um, yeah, you've yeah. And I the TIFF Film Circuit does a really good job at yeah. bringing Canadian films to those rural communities. Yeah. I mean, I just got the, the He Hated Pigeons with Screen in Kelowna, um, and I just got a check for $500, and there were, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of people at that screening through TIFF Film Circuit. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, well, let's talk that. Let's uh, TIFF Film Circuit. I, I actually really like them myself. They, they've done, uh, uh, they've brought me up to certain places so I could talk and, and uh, film and do what I, I love to do. So I, I'm a big fan of theirs, but w you know, this outreach to smaller communities, um, you know, what, what, what's your feedback from them when, when the $500 checks, that's a very good feedback, but what about <laughs> uh, a personal feedback about your film, particularly since maybe some of your movies and some of the stories aren't necessarily commercial. I got yours, right. Valerie, are, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a total sellout. Don't yeah. wrong. Sorry. Just gotta well, no, but I mean, just on the tip of that Kelowna screening, because it just happened a couple of weeks ago, I got five different emails from audience members completely having different opinions about the film. And not just one or two lines, but, but you know, 500 to 1,000 word emails giving me feedback. And it was fascinating. And I'm now going back and forth with them, and they want to see the other films, which will be available. And I'll come back with the next one. So again, you're fostering community and you're building your audience. Mm. And there is direct, there is direct link. Well, it, it, it's something too. Do, doesn't it help when they get to meet you? I mean, doesn't it break down some of the, the barriers, some of the, the sort of uh, uh, fascination that, that, that uh, or the impossibility of making a film? I mean, I think a lot of people probably assume it's just impossible to make a movie. Uh, and when they get to meet the director and, and, and connect with you, uh, does it break down some of those barriers? Oh, absolutely. Well, in Sudbury, you did, yeah. you did our Q&A, right? In I Sudbury, did And then um, we, uh, we sold out and we had another screening, a second screening. It did really well. We had uh, to open two theaters and, and people, I was pleasantly surprised. And I think people just like to hear the process, about the process, and, and that's how they connect to it. And the, uh, yeah, so yes. <laughs> yeah. and like more than that, it's important. I think we filmed Big Muddy in Saskatchewan, and as that was happening, the tax credit, we'd been grandfathered in. We were the, one of the last tax credit films to be shooting. So Union Pictures, who did an amazing job putting out the movie uh, theatrically in Canada, they had a huge launch to our Canadian theatrical release in Saskatchewan in both uh, Regina and Saskatoon. And it was really important for us to show face and say, we made this movie and you, you know, you have to be vigilant about what's going on with these seemingly sort of unimportant, you know, rules and laws and, uh, you know, tax benefits and things in your, in your province. So we, we wanted to come and put a big face on, like, look at, look at the film we made and, you know, people should, people should be fighting as they are in provinces like Saskatchewan and Nova Scotia to, you know, to reclaim these things that um, are it's impossible to make big money without that tax credit as it was at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's as it was at the time. They're trying to replace it and we have activists working all over in different provinces, but, you know, for something like that, for a province to see themselves on screen, you know, maybe we are too Ontario-centric sometimes that we don't have that regionality in our films. Go, 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 go. <laughs> At your age, you gotta have fun. You know, maybe that's why Sleeping Giant is so interesting to happen not in Toronto, that it's, you know, it's, um, where was it filmed? In Thunder Bay? Yeah, mm -hmm. Thunder Bay. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a really important part of Canadian cinema is to mm -hmm. remember that Canada is huge and there's yeah. a lot of filmmakers all across the country. There's super cool, look, Canada's top 10. There's really cool films from all over Canada. You know? I, I would have to agree with you. I'm going to wrap things up. Uh, with a th Thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me. It's been a delight for me. I, I, I want to wrap things up by uh, asking each of you uh, if there's a Canadian film. That people, uh, mine is The Gate. I think people should uh, go home and watch <laughs> The Gate. Uh, 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 it, 
Carl, would you like me to start with you? Sure. I, okay, a Canadian film that er, um, people should check out. I really loved Sarah Prefers to Run, mm. which yeah. is a French-Canadian um, uh, director, Chloe Robichaux. It was a very quiet and lovely movie, and I think it it is um, it's beautiful. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Valerie? Mm. Well, and you we can't say what Coral said. No, I can't. <laughs> you should see it, though. Like I'll, okay, I'll check it out. Yeah. Uh, you know, what comes to mind is going down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Classic um, Canadian, absolutely. I just, you know, and I just saw it again recently, and I think, what, how did you describe it? Like, messy, but beautiful and poignant and, uh, yeah. Is that me who described it that way? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wish it was. I, yeah, I wish it was. Yeah. <laughs> no. But, yeah. Um, I'm a huge fan of Crazy. Yes. Oh, by yeah. Jean-Marc Vallée. Uh, I love that film. I also love Mommy by Xavier Dolan. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love Sleeping Giant, which is a recent top ten, and Guy Madden's Forbidden Room. Which won this year uh, yes. at the, the Critics uh, Toronto Film Critics yeah, Association. Toronto Film Critics yeah. With Evan Johnson. Yes. Very good movies. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank our guests today for joining us, uh, the Coral, uh, Valerie, and Ingrid. Uh, you can, uh, if you had a question that I, you thought I should have asked and I didn't, it's not likely, but if you, there was one that I didn't ask, uh, you please contact us and uh, you can reach me at Twitter as well at Real Tom Ernst. So thank you for watching and remember, uh, keep making movies. It is the Canadian thing to do. <laughs>